So this was a couple of years ago. Um, we had just finished high school or maybe we were like a year out of high school. And um, I know this because Ubab Shabalala, you guys, my dad was so strict. Going out for us was such a mission. We came from that family where you would have to come up with a whole story in order to go out because he was just not here for it. And he was that very overprotective father. Now me and my sister are twins. So he was overprotective to begin with. Now, can you imagine having two people you have to be that overprotective of? So everything for him was like, if you want to go out, you can go out on your mother's weekends. My weekends, you're in. Now, this particular um, holiday, we'd all gone to vacation back home in Swaziland. And we got there. And again, now we've finished. We're, we've just, we're in university, like maybe first, second year. I, I think even first year. So about 19, 18. Yeah. And 19, 20. And... Um, one of our friends comes to the house in Swaziland and is like, oh, um, please, can we take um, the twins out? Um, they're here for holidays. We just want to hang out with them, that type of thing. And because my dad was such a softie, he said yes. So we're feeling so good about the night. We go, we get dressed, we're excited. We call our friends because the house in Swaziland was really big. We called our friends and we're like, pre-get dressed is at our house because the place is really, really big. So they came to our house, um, we got dressed, and now we know we're going to the local tavern because if anybody knows Swaziland, or actually now known as Eswatini, they know that um, the community and the place is so small that you kind of socialize in the same places, or at least back in the day. Um, and so you knew on Friday nights you go to X. You know Saturday nights you go to Y. You know Sundays it's... so. We knew tonight is this particular pub. So we get dressed, we go there, we have drinks, we're feeling it, they're playing nice music. At that time, it's when we were all listening to Make the Circle Big. Like we were there, okay? And we were just having a good old time. You know when they say, guys, as women, don't split up. They mean don't split up. When you need the bathroom, say, guys, I'm going to the bathroom. If I don't come out in the next 10 minutes, come looking for me or in the next five minutes. Like, everybody should know each other's activity. So anyway, one of our guy friends was like, guys, I'm going home. Now, let me give you a bit of a backup with Swaziland. How it works is that because of the fact that it's such a community-orientated place and it's also such a small country, you know, like, especially in the towns, you know pretty much everybody. So my dad... As strict as he was, never really had to say, how are you getting home? Because he knew we would get there and would either see a family member, um, a cousin, guy friends, female friends who could drive. Somebody's going to bring us home. That's for damn sure. Like, there's just no, we are going to find a lift home. So he says, how are we getting home? We tell him, no, we'll find somebody. So now our guy friend, fast forward, our guy friend, we're chilling, we're drinking with him. And he's like, guys, I'm going to, I'm going home. I'm having more drinks at the house. Some of the other guys are coming. Would you guys like to come with? And we think, yeah, let's just go. Because now the pub is getting really rowdy and we, we still want to have some fun. We just want to like tone it down a bit. So we say we're going. There's about four of us at this point or five of us. Now, the one friend does not want to leave. Now, it doesn't matter what we say. We cannot convince her to leave. She's found a guy there. She's feeling him. She's feeling the music. She's liking the drink. She doesn't want to go to a place where it's quiet and chill. She's like, I'm not going. We're grown-ups. What can we do? There's nothing we can do. We are trying to convince her. She's like, no. So we say, okay. Well, we are going from this guy's house. We're going home. So however this works out in your mind, you just need to ensure that by the time we pull up to the front of Ubab Shabalala's house, you need to be with us because Bab Shabalala will never stand for where so-and-so, oh, we don't know, we left her. No, you guys are supposed to take care of each other. So she's like, it's fine. I'll stay here for another hour. Then I'll meet you at this guy's house and then we'll all go back home. Cool. We go to this guy's house, we chill, we're laughing, we're drinking, everything is cool. Guys, maybe an hour later, baby girl pulls up. And I, she's t she asks me, first she calls in, she's like, are you still at so-and-so's house, the guy's house? And say his name's Dylan. Are you still at Dylan's house? Yes. Okay, I'm coming. 
then I see the taxi pulling up. So I'm like, oh, she's here. So I'm like, let me go out and meet her. As baby girl steps out of the taxi, I'm already like, what is going out here? Because the two-step was really strong. And I know something about myself. Because I've got a, such a low tolerance for alcohol because I'm not the biggest of drinkers. I'm also a bit of a two-stepper, which is really embarrassing. I hate that about myself. But she came out almost stumbling out of that taxi. So I was like, what's going on? And she was like, no, dude. Um, I don't know what she said. I don't know what she said. But I'm like, how much did you drink? And I'm trying to ask her. And at the same time, pay the taxi driver because she's just not all the way there. So anyway, we're walking towards the guy's house. And now I'm asking her, like, dog, how much were you drinking? What's going on? And she's not really coherent. So at this point, I'm feeling like we left you. You haven't even, we haven't even been apart for more than an hour. And I know you to be able to handle your liquor. So what is really going on here? Now at some point, I'm thinking, has somebody drugged my friend? Like, what is this? Has she been drugged? next thing we're inquiring we're inquiring we're inquiring the guy now whose house we go to is outright like listen mommy this isn't alcohol whatever this is it's not alcohol i also know you to be a strong drinker what were you taking have you taken ecstasy have you what what so she says i had some weed with so and so and she names the guy and he's already like Phew. so we're like what what's going on and he was like that guy never just puts weed in his joint he, he laces it so already we're like so you're on drugs you're on drugs at this point we're freaking out we're like are you what happened are you did you take drugs why what who how and she's not coherent now she's throwing up but when i say throwing up guys i knew it was real when baby girl was throwing up and passing gas at the same time like violently and the guy whose house we were at was looking at her like, I was hoping you guys were going to come here and chill and now you've come here and you've messed everything up because you must understand if somebody, if your friend is vomiting and passing gas, there's no more good times. You guys have to go home. Figure it out, but you have to go home. There's no, there's none of that. If she's blowing from both ends, go home. So at this point, we say to this guy, thank you so much for having us, but the best thing is for us to go home because at this point now, the only thing that's going through my mind is Ubab Shabalala. So we just put it in the cab and we're now talking in the car, like how are we going to get in? How are we going to make sure that we get in without him seeing this, that, and the other? We were scared, scared, scared. And he was not, he was not a shouter. That's the thing about my dad. He was not a shouter. He was not a shouter. But just that disappointment, it, it just was too much. It was too much. So we were like, okay, fine. When we get home, Nganyezi, you have to find a way to go and distract daddy. Go and sit and talk with him, this, that, and the other. And we'll find a way to drag our friend to the room. So we drag her to the room. I don't know how we pulled it off, but it worked. My sister went and distracted my dad. And we took our friend to the room. Then we put her in bed. I managed to strip her down and um, get her into like a sarong so that at least she could be cool and um, go to the kitchen and get lots of water so that she could drink and get like a bucket so that she could throw up because whatever it was, it was in there really needed to come out. So she threw up. Guys, mommy threw up, flicked her head back and passed the fuck out on the bed. At this point, we're looking at her like, is she dead? We're legit having a conversation over her body. Is she dead? Is she dead? My friend is feeling for a pulse. This, no, she's not dead. She's not dead. She's snoring. She's snoring. So we had the sense to push her over onto her side. When I say the rest of the night was life patrol, I mean the rest of the night we each slept in turns. There had to be somebody who would sit up and make sure she was always breathing and that there was always a snore coming. Then we would wake the next person up and be like, can I sleep for an hour? I'm not kidding, guys. This is what we did. We were so scared. And in retrospect, we should have actually called my dad and said, this is what has happened. But we were so young and foolish. We were scared. 
And our friend was like, she's not dying. Because we called him when she was throwing up and she passed out. He was like, yeah, she needed to pass out. She's not dying. And we were like, are you sure? Are we sure? One of the other girls was crying. And the rest of us were like, get your shit together. There's no time to cry. And he was like, she's not dead. Let her sleep. But we were literally on patrol, checking her pulse, making sure that she's still breathing. And because I was sharing a bed with her, at some point, I just couldn't sleep. So for the rest of the night, I was looking at her like, this girl, honestly, honestly, honestly. When they say, ladies, do not split up, don't split up. The moral of that story is we should have dragged her ass out of that club. And the next day when she came to, we each took a turn at going at her like, you are so fucking crazy. Like, don't try that again. Are you nuts? Do you even remember? And she was like, the last thing I remember was smoking weed with so-and-so in the corner. And I'm like, can you imagine? You couldn't even get a cab. We wouldn't have no We took turns going at her. We all have that friend who does really hectic things that makes us regret we even wanted to go out. If you're that friend, stop it.